The laser cuts through darkness at the speed of light. No missile, no explosion. Just a 60 kilowatt beam focused to surgical precision, tracking a drone weaving evasively at 80 miles per hour. Two seconds of sustained fire. The target's composite shell superheats to 1,400 degrees. The engine housing melts. The drone corkscrews into the ocean, trailing smoke. Another kill nobody will see on the evening news. Welcome to the future of warfare, where gunpowder becomes optional and magazines are measured in megawatts. 1432 hours, White Sands Missile Range, New Mexico. March 2025. The Pentagon just crossed a threshold 70 years in the making. For decades, directed energy weapons existed in laboratories and PowerPoint briefings, theoretical marvels that couldn't survive real combat conditions. Today, that equation has shattered. The Department of Defense allocated $23.8 billion across fiscal years 2023 to 2027 for high-energy lasers and high-powered microwave systems. Not for research, for deployment. Because China's launching drone swarms by the hundred, hypersonic missiles streak at Mach 10, and America's missile stockpiles can't sustain conflicts where every interception costs $3 million, while threats cost $30,000. Directed energy weapons solve that asymmetry with physics instead of explosives. Lasers travel at 186,000 miles per second, literally instantaneous at tactical ranges. Cost per shot? Roughly $3 in electricity. Magazine depth? Limited only by the ship's reactor or the generator's fuel tank. When adversaries saturate defenses with cheap drones designed to exhaust expensive missiles, directed energy becomes the great equalizer unlimited ammunition traveling at light speed. Two fundamental technologies define this revolution. High energy lasers generate concentrated electromagnetic radiation at wavelengths invisible to human eyes, but devastating to targets. 60 kilowatt systems melt drone airframes. 300 kilowatt weapons can defeat cruise missiles and small boats. Future terawatt class systems could burn through ballistic missile nose cones during boost phase. High-powered microwave weapons emit focused radio frequency energy that fries electronics without physical damage, perfect for disabling drone swarms or electromagnetic pulse attacks on enemy sensors. Compare this to existing defenses. Phalanx CIWS fires 4,500 rounds per minute at $30 per round. $2,250 for five seconds of defensive fire. CRAM missiles cost $905,000 each. Directed energy systems fire continuously for cents per second. The economic advantage isn't incremental, it's revolutionary. Lockheed Martin's Helios, high-energy laser with integrated optical dazzler and surveillance, became the Navy's first shipboard laser weapon in 2022. Deployed aboard USS Preble, 60 kilowatts of focused energy integrated directly into Aegis combat systems. Northrop Grumman delivered the solid-state laser technology maturation system to the Army in 2022. A 50-kilowatt weapon mounted on striker vehicles, proven against Group 1, 2 and 3 drones, including systems weighing over 1,300 pounds. Raytheon's high-energy laser weapon system destroyed hundreds of drones in testing, demonstrating multi-target engagement and beam director precision. But power levels are exploding. The Navy's 300 kilowatt laser program targets 2027 deployment, six times more powerful than current systems, capable of defeating anti-ship cruise missiles. DARPA's shield, ship-based high-energy laser integrated defense, pushes toward megawatt-class weapons that could engage ballistic missiles. These aren't concepts. They're funded programs with hardware in production. Development began in the 1960s when scientists first theorized weaponized lasers. Early systems were massive, inefficient, and consumed more power than aircraft carriers generated. The 1980s Strategic Defense Initiative promised space-based lasers but lacked the technology to deliver. Real progress came in the 2000s when solid-state laser technology matured, fiber optics enabled beam combining, and adaptive optics compensated for atmospheric distortion. By 2010, Northrop Grumman's laser weapon system sank boats and destroyed aircraft in Navy testing. The technology transitioned from laboratory curiosity to operational capability. Testing validated revolutionary performance. In 2023, the Navy's layered laser defense system 
destroyed subsonic cruise missile analogs at White Sands. Northrop Grumman's compact laser weapon system eliminated nearly 500 drones across multiple test series. The Army's palletized high-energy laser shot down 60-plus unmanned aerial systems in operational demonstrations. High-powered microwave weapons disabled drone swarms without kinetic interceptors. Each test proved that directed energy could defeat real threats under realistic conditions. Red Sea, 2034. An American destroyer detects contacts. 30 unmanned aerial vehicles inbound at low altitude, spread across a 100-mile front. Houthi forces adapted Iranian drone technology into saturation attack doctrine. Traditional missile defenses would face impossible math. 30 targets, maybe 40 interceptors available, $2 million per shot, no guarantee every missile kills its target. The weapons officer doesn't hesitate. Helios activates, tracking algorithms selecting targets autonomously. The first drone explodes mid-flight as its fuel tank superheats. Three seconds later, the second disintegrates. The laser slews to the third target. Engagement time under five seconds per kill. Simultaneously, high-powered microwave systems sweep sectors, frying guidance electronics on drones beyond laser range. 28 drones fall from the sky within four minutes. Two penetrate defenses and are destroyed by conventional missiles. The destroyer suffers zero damage. Ammunition expenditure, 180 seconds of laser operation, costing approximately $9 in electricity but saturation attacks intensify. The second wave launches, 50 drones coordinated with anti-ship cruise missiles. Helios engages continuously, destroying targets faster than human operators can designate them. The AI battle management prioritizes threats autonomously. Drones closest to the ship first, then cruise missiles entering terminal attack phase. Adaptive optics compensate for atmospheric turbulence, keeping beams focused despite humidity and thermal blooming. The 300-kilowatt laser engages cruise missiles at extended range, burning through hardened nose cones. In nine minutes, the destroyer defeats 73 threats while expending fewer than 12 kinetic interceptors as backup. The cost differential is staggering. Traditional defense would have cost $63 million in missiles. Directed energy cost $27,000. Behind this technological leap stands an industrial ecosystem spanning decades. Lockheed Martin's facilities in Sunnyvale develop beam directors and fire control systems requiring optical precision measured in nanometers. Northrop Grumman's Redondo Beach campus produces solid-state laser modules using fiber-optic combining techniques pioneered for telecommunications. Raytheon's Tucson operations engineer targeting algorithms processing battlefield data at gigabit speeds. The supply chains touch specialized manufacturers nationwide. Corning produces laser-grade optical fibers. Coherent supplies high-power laser diodes. Two to six advanced materials fabricates thermal management systems, dissipating kilowatts of waste heat. These components require workers skilled in photonics, thermal engineering, and precision optics. Expertise that takes years to develop and cannot be quickly replicated by adversaries. Directed energy forces profound strategic recalculations. For 50 years, anti-ship missiles threatened American naval dominance because defending cost more than attacking. Directed energy inverts that equation. Suddenly, saturation attacks become economically unsustainable for adversaries, while defenders possess effectively unlimited magazines. China's DF-21 carrier killer missiles remain potent but their supporting drone reconnaissance networks become vulnerable to laser-armed escorts. Russia's Kinzhal hypersonic missiles face future megawatt-class systems capable of boost-phase intercepts. Yet challenges remain brutally real. Atmospheric conditions degrade laser effectiveness. Clouds, fog, rain scatter beams and reduce range. Thermal blooming occurs when high-energy lasers superheat air along their path, defocusing the beam. Power requirements demand massive electrical generation. 300 kilowatt systems draw enough electricity to power 250 homes. Mobile platforms struggle with cooling systems weighing tons. And adaptive enemy tactics emerge. Reflective coatings, ablative shells, spin-stabilized targets that distribute thermal energy. The $23.8 billion investment reflects recognition that directed energy represents more than incremental improvement. 
its fundamental transformation of defensive warfare. When threats multiply faster than budgets allow traditional responses, when hypersonic speeds compress decision timelines to seconds, when adversaries mass cheap systems to exhaust expensive defenses, directed energy provides answers conventional weapons cannot. So here's the question. If you commanded a carrier strike group facing thousand drone swarms and hypersonic salvos, would you rather have unlimited laser magazines or finite missile inventories? Because that choice will define naval warfare for the next 50 years. This is DIB Dispatch, where billion-dollar projects meet battlefield reality.